Good morning, everyone. My name is Karen Chang, and I am a program manager at Pacific Coast Information Systems. Welcome to our webinar series, Case for Security, which is intended to help security stakeholders and practitioners stay informed of the key drivers, strategies, and approaches to protect their business and maintain efficient IT operations. Today's topic is PCI DSS and the basics of data security compliance. This webinar aims to help business owners and executives understand their compliance requirements as well as the consequences of non-compliance. Standards such as PCI are a good starting point for companies looking to ensure business continuity and smooth operations. Before we get started on our main topic, allow me a brief moment to introduce who we are. PCIS has been supporting businesses in BC and throughout North America since 1995. Our key areas of practice include IT network and system support services, network and web application security, and business collaboration tools and technologies. Boombox is a division of PCIS that focuses on security and compliance. So for our agenda, we're going to provide an overview of PCI DSS, understand whether your organization is affected, cover validation requirements, through a case study, show the consequences of non-compliance, identify areas to start this process, and I'll provide you with some resources, then we can wrap up with some questions. The Payment Card Industry Security Standard, otherwise referred to as PCI DSS, is a set of requirements intended to enhance payment account data security. This worldwide information security standard was developed by the founding payment brands of the PCI Security Standards Council to help prevent credit card fraud through increased controls around data and its exposure to compromise. It is intended to facilitate the broad adoption of consistent data security measures on a global basis. At the core of PCI DSS is a group of principles. There are six control objectives and 12 accompanying requirements. Looking at the table above, you can see that many of the controls and requirements are good practices for any organization looking to protect and secure its information assets. Indeed, simply replace the words cardholder data with sensitive corporate data and you will see that many of these practices can be adopted to help secure any form of data. So, is your organization affected? If your organization stores, processes, or transmits cardholder data, you are obligated to comply with the PCI standard. The number of credit card transaction volumes determines the compliance validation steps you are required to follow. Larger merchants are required to have annual on-site audits and network scans performed quarterly by certified assessors. Smaller merchants may only be required to do self-assessments. The merchant level differs differ between the credit card companies, so you have to check with your merchant agreement for specific requirements. A snapshot of Visa so what are the consequences of non-compliance? Let us look at Heartland Payment Systems as an example. Here is a company that was actually PCI DSS compliant when it fell victim to malware that was planted on its payment processing network. Heartland discovered that malicious software recorded payment card data that was being sent by thousands of its retail clients to Heartland for processing. As a result, Heartland has become the unfortunate case study of what happens when a breach occurs. Stockholders, shareholders are not happy. Heartland proves the simple fact that even though you t can take best measures to ensure compliance, compliance does not guarantee security. Heartland, trading under the symbol HPY, processes payments for more than 250,000 businesses. It began receiving fraudulent activity reports late last year from MasterCard and Visa on cards that had all been used at merchants that rely on Heartland to process payments. It wasn't until January 20th that Heartland President and CFO Robert Baldwin issued this statement. 
We found evidence of an intrusion last week and immediately notified federal law enforcement officials as well as the card brands. We understand that this incident may be the result of a widespread global cyber fraud operation and we are cooperating closely with the United States Secret Service and the Department of Justice. On that day, Heartland stock had closed at $14. As the news about the breach spread, we see that two days later, the stock closed just above $8 per share. This represents a decline of approximately 40%, more than $200 million in shareholder value, and is seen as the nearly vertical line in the first portion of the chart shown. Heartland stock price still suffers the consequences.